So you're looking for a new bike and you're wondering if you should get a hard tail or a full suspension? I made this video to help you come to that decision. There is a big debate whether a hard tail or a dual suspension bike is better, but really it comes down to what you're riding and your price range. I'm going to break this video down into four main segments, the advantages and disadvantages of each bike, I'll say two reasons for each, and what bike you should get. These will all be in the video's chapters as well as listed below in the description. Now we'll go over the advantages of a hardtail. First of all, they get you more bang for your buck because a similarly priced dual suspension bike will have worse components. This is just because instead of having a frame at the back, you need extra pivot points, bushings, bearings and the shock itself. For example, this bike here is the Merida Big 9 3000, which is 2,600 Australian dollars or 1,900 US dollars. It has 100mm Manitou Mark IV forks with a 1x12 Shram SX Eagle drivetrain, Shimano hydraulic disc brakes and the main feature a carbon frame, meaning it comes in at only 11.45 kilos. Now if we compare that to the Merida 12400, which is the exact same price but a dual suspension bike, we can see that it has way worse components. Even though the forks have 30mm of extra travel, they just aren't as good, being Suntour XCR34s. The shock is decent, but there are better options for this price range. Moving on to the group set, it has the budget Shimano Dior M5100, which don't get me wrong is good, but I would much rather have the SX Eagle on the Big 9. The brakes on the 120 are also not as good, being tech M275s. The 120 weighs nearly 4 kilos heavier, coming in at 15.3 kilos, which could be the difference between completing a climb or being too tired to do it. This is why a mid-range hardtail could be a better choice for a beginner than a low-range full suspension. Another advantage of a hardtail is that they force you to become a better rider because they are less forgiving. If you choose a bad line or mess up a bit on a jump, you'll feel the consequences or come off. Residual suspension bike will help soak up some of the shock. With a hardtail, you can also feel feedback from the trail because there is no rear shock to soak it up. This means if you pay attention to it, you can feel which line is best for you and you can hone in on the skills that you need to practice to get better at riding. This could also be a disadvantage, however, which brings us to our next point. Because there's no shock at the back to absorb bumps when climbing, the rear wheel can lose traction and therefore efficiency. This happens when the back wheel hits a bump like a rock or a root, which then sends the wheel into the air. And if the wheel is in the air, then it has no traction. If you're a professional racer or you're just having a friendly race between you and your friends, this could be the difference between winning and losing. When descending, the back wheel can flick up or thump down, which can lead to crashing or damaging some of the components on the bike, as the wheel and spokes can only handle so much stress. This can also knock away some of your confidence, which means you won't progress in mountain biking as much overall. If the back wheel is going all over the place, this can affect your ability to maneuver yourself out of harm's way. The final downside to hardtails that I'll be discussing is that they can't handle as rough as terrain as their full suspension counterparts. If all your friends are on dual sus bikes, then you'll either get left behind because you have to go slow on the trails, or you could damage your components when you try to do extreme bumps or bigger drops when you try to keep up with them. When cornering, you'll have to take it a bit slower to keep traction on the rear wheel, especially if there are bumps in the trail. Another thing that this affects is that there's no sag in the frame like there is with suspension, meaning if there is a hole or an obstacle where your rear wheel needs to drop down, the suspension won't do it and you could lose traction. It can also be hard to ride and follow the trail when your bike is moving violently in all directions beneath you, but again, this can help improve your skills. There are many benefits to having a dual suspension bike. First of all, they offer better traction and handling. When you hit an obstacle like a rock or a root, the suspension compresses so that the wheel can move up vertically and roll over it. This ensures the wheels maintain contact with the ground at all times, which greatly improves your traction and handling. With a full suspension bike, you can corner faster round turns without worrying about your bike slipping out from under you, whereas with a hardtail, the wheels could slip out and you could fall off and lose control. Get better control of the bike when riding bumpy terrain, because after all, your tyres have to be on the ground to get grip. A dual suspension bike also provides a much more comfy ride. The rear shock system absorbs all of the bumps and vibrations from the trail. While riding on a rough surface or landing from a big drop, you'll feel less bumps and vibrations going through your body. This makes for a smoother and more comfortable ride, meaning you can ride rougher trails longer without worrying about tiring out. Your legs and arms will fatigue less when your bike absorbs the big bumps and vibrations for you. That means this style of bike can be better for someone who is sensitive to bumps on trails or they ride bumpier trails so they need the extra suspension at the back. One of the least favourable things on a dual sauce bike is the weight. On average, a full suspension bike weighs one to two kilos heavier than a similar hardtail. 
The rear shock absorber, bearings, bushings and more complex frame design all add to the weight of the bike. A rear shock absorber alone weighs around a quarter to half a kilo. To add to that, if you have a coil suspension system, that will weigh even more than an air suspension system. A heavier bike takes more energy to accelerate and climb with. It also makes it harder to manoeuvre and handle the bike, but again, the rear shock can make up for that with its increased traction. Another main downside to a full suspension bike is the efficiency. The rear shock tends to compress and rebound as you pedal. This causes a motion where the suspension is rebound and compressing continuously as you pedal. This is known as pedal bob. All full suspension bikes suffer from pedal bob. This means you lose a lot of energy and efficiency because instead of the power you generate going straight to the back wheel, like on a hardtail, it first goes through the suspension, compresses it, and then to the back wheel on a full suspension bike. For these reasons, a dual suspension bike is not ideal for riding long distances like bike packing, riding on smooth trails, gravel riding, or riding up hills. But for downhill riding where these bikes really shine, efficiency doesn't matter because gravity pulls you down the hill. So now that I've said some of the pros and cons of each type of bike, it's time to decide which style is best for you. Really, it depends on the type of riding you do and your budget. If you ride on more gravel or fire trails with not many features like drops, jumps and berms, then a hardtail is more suited for you. Whereas if you're riding more gnarly trails with big gap jumps, enormous drops and huge rocks and bumps that you have to manoeuvre around and ride over, a dual suspension bike is more suited to you. That being said, there are still pros that ride really rough trails on hardtails. Another factor to consider is the budget. If you can only spend $1,500 on a bike, then you're better off to get a mid-range hardtail than a low-end dual suspension bike. Also, if you can have only one bike, then a hardtail is probably better suited for you because they are more diverse. They are fine for riding to work or school, yet still perform well on weekend trails. Another thing to consider when choosing a bike is the type of frame and suspension, but we'll go over that in another video. If you like the look of the bikes I used in this video, check out the reviews on them right here. Whichever bike you choose, I hope this video helped you to come to that decision. I hope you enjoyed the video, have a good day, please like and subscribe for more mountain biking content like this and I'll see you on the next video.